All right, so a uh, buddy of mine called me up and said, drive down the road and car cut off. Okay, cool. So what do we do? Well, go check this thing out. Um, it will crank, or excuse me, it'll, it'll turn over, but it won't actually start. So um, three basic things you need for any engine to run is going to be air, fuel, and spark. Okay? So rarely ever is, is air the issue. It can be, obviously, but it rarely is. So we're going to look for spark. We're going to look for fuel. Um, what we have here is an 01 a Jetta 1.8 turbo. Okay? Um, this fuel system doesn't have, at least that I know of up here anywhere, uh, does not have anywhere that you can open up for like a Schrader valve and test for fuel. So what I did is just popped off the feed line at the bottom and it sprayed everywhere. It was pretty high pressure, so we know we have fuel. Um, I have not checked to see if we have pulse width on the injectors, but I want to check the spark next. Pull these out, it's just dripping oil. So the valve cover was leaking around the spark plug tubes in here and just soaked them down. You could see about I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or so of each top of spark plugs. So we know that's an issue. So, you know, when we figure this out, we're going to replace, you know, the spark plugs, we're going to replace the valve gasket, and it also check engine light. So we went ahead and scanned it, found uh, camshaft sensor, position sensor, bank one. It's a four cylinder, it only has one. Where that's located is actually under the timing cover right here. If you pop the timing cover back, you can see it, it sits right here. It's got two. M6 10 millimeter bolts holding in. Connected right here, here on the bottom. I'll get a light on there and uh, let's see. Let me find a light. All right. So right back here, you know, here's your time belt. It's just starting to wear a little bit. Um, but you got your right here. Like I said, here's the connector. It's just got a little spring clip on this side. You'll push that in. Pull that off. And then there's the two bolts, one here and one here, and that'll pop right off. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. And uh, we're gonna replace the spark plugs and the valve cover gasket, and hopefully that'll uh, that'll take care of our issues. So we've got all our parts here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this uh, little uh, I don't know what this is a little vacuum accumulator or resonator or something like that up here. Uh, Ten millimeter, pull that back, and then I think it's five millimeter Allen's across here. Pull those out, and we'll pull the the coils out and the harness back, and then just go around. You got little ten millimeter nuts all the way around. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many there are, but you, I mean, just get an idea. I'll count them to let you know. Pull off the uh, the breather hose here on the side, and we'll pull this thing off. Um, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we get in there. Okay, so we got the valve cover off. Um, there's, uh, let's see, how many were there? One, two, three. These are all studded, so they have nuts on top. You know, most a lot of valve covers have actual bolts going down, but you have one, two, three four, five, and six, okay, in the back and the front. Then you got three in the middle as well. Don't forget about those. We don't want to crack anything like our last job. <laughs> um, as you can tell, there's a lot of sludge buildup on this. Um, this, is, uh, this is where changing your oil comes important. It was neglected on this car. <laughs> um, so make sure you change your oil. This, this will cause uh, a lot of issues, especially with this engine. You can get, uh, you might get an oil light or something for, um, Low oil pressure. These are just bad about it, so you know, change your oil often. Make sure you're doing that. Um, anyway, what we're gonna do here is, you know, like I said, they were leaking real bad into the spark plug tubes. I cleaned those out last night, but um, we're gonna clean up the ceiling surfaces, uh, just like we would on anything. Um, I'm gonna wipe them all down first, and then we get a little uh, Scotch Brite and uh, go in here and clean up all these surfaces all the way around. Uh, one you need to pay attention to is this back corner back over here. It's pretty hard to see. Um, can you show that? There's, uh, it goes up and over this hump here, and then it goes down, and then there's actually like a little half moon there on this end. So it, it's shaped kind of funny. See if I'll, I'll show you on the new one so you can see what it looks like. The new gasket. That's your centerpiece for the spark plugs, spark plug tubes. And uh, which is what was really caused a big problem here. It was leaking on the outside, but not, not near as bad as it was on the inside. So here's the new uh, valve cover gasket. You know, you got your works raised up there on the end, on over there by the uh, timing belt and the camshaft position center. This is the side I'm, I want you to pay attention to here is how it raises up here like it does on the other one. But then you comes down, you got a little half moon there. So make sure you get all this stuff clean. And um, you know, my personal preference is 
on any gasket I'm doing, on any time it takes a, a drastic change in direction, it's not smooth, you know, this is all going one way, it's fine. But as it goes like up now, and then it goes back down here, and you got the half moons. On all these points, I always put a little bit of uh, RTV or Honda Bond or something, whatever your preference is. Um, and right here I'll do the same thing. Uh, and it just helps to seal on these corners that don't always get the right pressures or whatever. So, uh, just another little piece of advice. So, anyway, we're going to get a little scotch Bright, clean all that stuff up. Um, and while we're in here, uh, I'll show you this as well. For those of you not familiar with this engine, um, this is a 20 valve engine. So, you've got, you actually see three lobes here. This is for your intake. So, there's actually three tiny um, valves there for your intake. And then, um, and actually, they're they're slightly offset. You got two up here, and then this one's actually back just a little bit to make room for them all. Then you got two for the exhaust. So there's five per cylinder, opposed to the typical, you know, four. Or so, um, but anyway, just to kind of give you an idea, and uh, that's what it looks like. While you're in here, you can always check and see. This one's actually driven. The timing belt over here drives just the one cam, and then on the back side of the two cams, it's driven by a chain. Okay. And this chain tensioner here. Um, just keep an eye, make sure your plastic piece isn't broke here, whatever. Um, with the build-up stuff in here, I'm not gonna go pressing on anything too hard. I don't want anything to break. So, um, just keep an eye on that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll pop off this sensor here. And we'll take a look at that as well while it's opened up. And uh, I'll show you what all that looks like as well. Okay, I want to point out a couple things to you real quick while we got everything opened up here. Um, one thing I didn't point out before was when you're taking the Valkyrie off, and we've already cleaned all this up. You can see you just clean your surfaces up, run around. Um, there's a little breather hose coming right up here on this side. Be careful with that guy. Um, it's pretty short right here, and this one's pretty weak. If you look back here also, you know, so these fuel lines, you'll, um, not fuel lines, I'm sorry, errors, but you see how that's ripped open? Now, basically this is part of your PCV system. Um, and what that's doing is, you know, taking the gases inside the engine and putting them out here and reburning them. Now, so being that that's after the mass airflow sensor, I'm not sure about this valve. If it's a one-way valve, then you're probably okay. But if it's not a one-way valve, then this right here is going to be, you know, going to turn into unmetered air. Unmetered air is going to be a mixture too lean. So what that's going to have to do is the engine's going to have to compensate for that as much as possible by adding more fuel. I said adding more fuel. <laughs> the cost of fuel right now is ridiculous. So um, if you've got vacuum leaks or anything like that, take care of that. If you've got any leaks or, or issues with your P, uh, PCV system, positive crankcase ventilation system. That's taking the gases that build up in the engine and putting them somewhere else outside the engine, basically back in the intake and reburning them. The reason you want that to happen is because if that, gets, if that doesn't work properly, then it's going to take those pressure and it's going to put it out anywhere it can. The weakest point on there is going to be one of your gaskets. So a failed PCV system will cause leaks. If you have a failed PCV system and you have leaks, make sure you do that with it. Otherwise, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're going to be back in there doing the same thing. So uh, a couple of hoses here. We're going to come back and I'm going to probably order those tomorrow and we'll replace those as well. Um, but anyway, we cleaned up the main surfaces down here all the way around. Um, I usually start with a rag and get all the oil and grease off because if you take a little scotch bright, they get if you get grease on there, they don't work near as well. So I'll wipe everything down, then I'll scotch bright and I'll wipe them back down to get any any small shavings or anything there, any, any debris. Um, went ahead and took off uh, the cam position sensor over here. And you can see here's the, the, the cam wheel. Um, basically, it's just like a digital sine wave, like a Hall effect sensor or whatever. Um, it, it's basically going to give you uh, where top dead center is, where the pistons are or whatever. Um, so basically you can fire that's I don't know exactly what this one does some of them only do pulse width on your injector some of them do your coils this one may do both I, I, I don't know specifically but this is going to tell the, the computer where the engines at um, and that's going to allow either your fuel and or your spark to to uh, fire at the right time so here is the one we took off um, this will kind of upset you right here so for retail Close to $200, you can get it offline for less than 100 bucks, I think. Um, but anyway, here's what it looks like. Mounts like that on the side. Two M6 10 millimeter head bolts. You got your little connector down there. It's a three pin, and that's all it is. You get your three wires that come up. Come out of the pins, come down. 
uh, and go in here. So mm, exactly how this works, I don't know. They make it, of course, so if you take it apart, you're gonna break it. Um, but you've got basically, uh, it looks like it's probably gonna be magnets on each side, and then when that goes in there, it's gonna interrupt that signal uh, and change, cause it to change on your sine wave. So um, anyway, so we've got those. We're gonna replace it with a new one. If we've got, and this is on the outside of the engine, so you don't have to worry about oil or anything. There should be a seal for it or something like that. Unless, the only time you would see oil is if the actual, the black part right there is the end of the camshaft. And you know what? Of course it's leaking. Actually, there's a little bit of oil down there. I'll clean that out first. Uh, but the oil seal, the end of the cam seal here is leaking. The one back here is as well behind the timing belt, which I think we might do later on. Uh, if we do that, we'll do those cam seals then because we'll have that whole side of the engine opened up. Um, but anyway, you can kind of look there and see if those are leaking at that time. Uh, if you take that off, it has to go back exactly where it's at. I don't know what the time procedure is for that. I don't have those up right now. Um, when we go to do that stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll make note of it and let you know how to do that. But um, I'll figure it out and let you know. But that sensor ring, if you take that, let's say it's not keyed in any way, that have a, like a little key on there or something, and you take it off and spin it over a little bit and do it back, you're gonna mess up the whole timing of the, of the, the, the engine here. That's not gonna work. So not, not the engine time, excuse me, the ignition time or whatever. Um, if this doesn't know where it's at, it's not gonna fire at the right times, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna produce spark, you're not gonna produce combustion and all that. So um, make sure if you take this off, you put it back exactly where it's at. Or like I said, when I figure out, when we get in here, I'll figure out if there's a certain key on there or something like that, or I'll figure out how we got to mark it or something before we do it so that we, we don't mess that up. So um, We're gonna put those back together. I'm gonna put the new spark plugs in. Um, uh, actually, hang on one second, I'll pull the spark plug. All right, now we had these out yesterday and I already cleaned them out. They were, well, you can still see where they're oil soaked. Oil was up to it, all the way up to about right here on all of them. Um, you can see blow by on here. Uh, let's see if we can go over here a little more light. You can see where there's a little bit of blow by coming up where the oil's coming through. Past the porcelain, that's coming through the internal part. It's actually going through here and the porcelain's separating slightly so it's blowing by coming up here. Um, if you turn it over, um, you can see a little bit of carbon buildup on here, a little bit right there. Um, you can see where the electrodes burnt down quite a bit, and I don't know if I can get this in there or not, but the, uh, the actual arm that comes up is actually where it should be flat across. It's actually slanted down like that, so it's burning hotter on one side or, or for whatever reason, whether it's the carbon buildup or the electrodes, kind of funny. Um, you know, or whatever. If there's buildup on there, it may burn only on one side. So anyway, plugs definitely need to be replaced, um, which we're gonna do. And uh, let's see, with that in mind, remember when I said the whole thing was dripping in oil? Um, I picked this up and they were soaked up to about in here with oil dripping down. These just have little rubber boots on them. You can pop off. Uh, we spray some brake clean in there and clean it out. Um, definitely wanna spray some brake clean down in here, get that cleaned out. Brake cleaning is actually a really good electrical uh, cleaner. It, it won't hurt anything, so you can just spray it right down in there and just kind of let it dry out. Um, put the boots back on. Uh, if you want to replace those, you can. These actually don't feel horrible, even though they were oil soaked. So we're not going to do that. Um, so anyway, you want to get those cleaned up. We'll put the spark plugs in. Um, don't don't just guess on a spark plug. If you've got a torque wrench, use it. Um, I mean, I think I torque almost all of them to about 24 newton meters. Um, this one says, on, most of them will say on the box, this is 21 foot pounds or 28 newton meters. Um, BMW is pretty much all 24 newton meters. Um, so, torque that, or, or if you don't have a torque wrench, uh, something I'll show you on here on a on spark plug is this sleeve right here. This washer actually has you can see how it's raised up. What that's meant to do is actually to crush down under that certain torque. It, it'll crush down and seal like it's supposed to. So 
If you're gonna do it by hand, go around, get it snug, and then feel it crush, you know, just let it crush just a little bit and then just stop. You don't need to over tighten these. There's gonna be a pain coming out. You definitely don't want them to seize up and break or anything like that. Um, if you've got it, you can put a little bit of um, anesthesia on the threads. Make sure you keep it on the threads up high. Don't get it down here. I need an electric or anything like that. Um, but here you can see, this is actually a, a Bosch, not an NGK, but um, you can see the size of that electrode opposed to what's left of that one. Now this electrode's not, uh, NGKs are actually a little smaller, but you can see a big difference in what you're looking at here. Um, so anyway, keep those things in mind. Uh, we're gonna put this back together, and if for some reason there's something else going on we don't know about, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. But I mean, that's pretty much how you, uh, how you do a valve cover gasket, spark plugs, and a camshaft assist sensor on an 01 Jetta 1.8T.